Hey there folks, welcome to A Journey Back in Time. Tonight we're diving deep into the Arabian Desert, not for oil, but for a history lesson that will take us to the roots of this fascinating land. Forget your fancy Teslas and iPhones, we're going back to a time when Saudi Arabia's economy wasn't fueled by black gold, but by something far more ancient, resilience and ingenuity. Before the discovery of oil, the region we know today as Saudi Arabia was a vastly different place, a land where survival was an art form. Forget skyscrapers and sprawling cities, picture endless deserts, nomadic tribes, and a way of life intrinsically tied to the land. These tribes moved with the seasons, following water sources and grazing lands. This was a land of scorching sun, scarce water, and a surprising amount of economic activity. Markets were the heart of social life where people traded goods, stories, and news. The lifeblood of this pre-oil economy, three things, agriculture, trade, and pilgrimage. Despite the harsh conditions, people cultivated crops like dates and grains using ingenious irrigation methods. These pillars, seemingly simple, held up a society grappling with the challenges of a harsh desert environment. Trade caravans crisscrossed the desert carrying spices, textiles, and other goods. And trust me, when I say harsh, I mean sunburn in the shade kind of harsh. The desert sun was relentless, and survival required not just physical endurance but also a deep understanding of the land. But here's the kicker, the Arabian Peninsula, despite its unforgiving climate, wasn't some isolated backwater. Its strategic location made it a hub of activity. It was a crucial crossroads of the world, a vital link connecting the East and the West. Traders from far and wide passed through, bringing with them not just goods but also ideas and cultures. Think of it as the ancient world's version of a bustling international airport, with camels instead of airplanes. These trade routes were the arteries that kept the lifeblood of the region flowing, making it a melting pot of cultures and innovations. So, as we dig deeper into this land before black gold, remember that the story of Saudi Arabia is one of resilience, adaptation, and a rich tapestry of human endeavor, long before oil ever came into the picture. Stay tuned as we uncover more about this fascinating era, where the sands of time reveal tales of a bygone world. Now let's get real for a second. Life in pre-oil Saudi Arabia wasn't exactly a picnic. The economy was what economists politely call subsistence-based. In layman's terms it meant growing enough to survive, trading for the rest, and thanking your lucky stars if you had a few extra dates to barter with. Imagine this, scorching sun, sand as far as the eye can see, and you, trying to eke out an existence from this unforgiving landscape. It's enough to make you crave air conditioning and a cold beverage, am I right? This was the reality for the people of pre-oil Arabia. But here's the thing about humans. We're a resourceful bunch, especially when faced with a challenge. The people of this region over centuries learned to not just survive but to thrive in this environment. They didn't just adapt, they mastered the art of desert living. From cultivating date palms for their precious fruit to herding camels for transportation and sustenance, life in pre-oil Arabia was a delicate dance between human ingenuity and the unforgiving forces of nature. These were not people easily deterred, they were, by necessity, masters of survival. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, or rather, the lack of elephants. See, deserts aren't exactly known for their lush greenery and abundant wildlife. Pre-oil Arabia was no different. Water, or the lack thereof, dictated everything. Think of the most parched, sun-baked landscape you can imagine. Now multiply that by, well, a lot. That's pre-oil Arabia for you. Water sources were scarce, scattered across the vast expanse like precious jewels guarded by the very sandstorms that threatened to bury them. But the lack of water wasn't just an inconvenience, it was a matter of life and death. It shaped every aspect of life, from the nomadic patterns of the Bedouin tribes to the strategic importance of oases, as vital lifelines in a sea of sand. This constant struggle for water fostered a deep respect for its value. It wasn't just a resource, it was a treasure, carefully collected, rationed, and revered. It's a lesson some of us with our perpetually running taps could stand to learn. Section 4. Oases. Islands of life in a sea of sand. Imagine trekking through the desert, the sun beating down relentlessly, your throat parched and your vision blurry with heat haze. The vast expanse of sand stretches endlessly, and every step feels like a monumental effort. Suddenly, in the distance, a mirage? No, an oasis! 
The shimmering heat waves give way to the unmistakable sight of lush greenery and sparkling water. Palm trees swaying gently in the breeze, the glint of water reflecting the sun. It's a sight more beautiful than any oil well, believe me. The oasis stands as a beacon of hope and life in the otherwise barren landscape. Oases were the lifeblood of pre-oil Arabia, scattered across the desert like emerald jewels on a tapestry of gold. These natural havens provided essential resources that sustained both human and animal life. These fertile pockets, nourished by underground water sources, were more than just pit stops for weary travelers. They were bustling hubs of life and commerce. The oases were vibrant communities where people gathered, traded, and thrived. Here, date palms flourished, providing shade, food, and even building materials. The date palm was a versatile and invaluable resource, its fruit a staple in the diet of desert dwellers. Fruits and vegetables grew in abundance, thanks to the ingenuity of farmers who mastered the art of irrigation in this water-scarce environment. Ingenious irrigation techniques, such as the use of canats and wells, allowed for the cultivation of a variety of crops. Oases were like magnets, drawing people and livestock alike with the promise of sustenance and respite from the harsh desert. The presence of water and vegetation created a micro-ecosystem that supported a diverse range of life. But they weren't just about survival, they were centers of social and economic exchange. The oases served as meeting points where different cultures and communities intersected, fostering a rich tapestry of interactions. Traders laden with goods from distant lands would converge on these oases, their arrival a much-anticipated event. The exchange of goods, ideas, and stories added to the vibrancy and significance of these desert havens. Oases were in essence the original desert malls, minus the air conditioning and annoying jingles. They were the lifelines of the desert providing not just physical sustenance, but also a sense of community and connection in an otherwise isolated and challenging environment. Section 5. Camels, Ships of the Desert. Now let's talk about the unsung heroes of pre-oil Arabia camels. These remarkable creatures, often dubbed ships of the desert, were the backbone of transportation and trade across this vast and unforgiving landscape. Forget your SUVs and monster trucks, camels were the ultimate all-terrain vehicles. Imagine a world without roads, trains, or planes. That's pre-oil Arabia, where getting around meant relying on the incredible resilience and stamina of camels. These hardy creatures could withstand the most grueling journeys, traversing vast distances with little water and even less complaint. Camels weren't just a mode of transport, they were a lifeline. They carried goods, people, and even water across the treacherous desert terrain, connecting distant communities and facilitating trade. Their milk provided sustenance, their wool offered protection from the elements, and their dung, believe it or not, served as valuable fuel. Think of them as the Amazon delivery drivers of their time, but with fewer union disputes and a lot more spitting. These furry marvels were instrumental in shaping the social and economic fabric of pre-oil Arabia. They were, quite literally, the driving force behind it all. With their long eyelashes and expressive eyes, camels have a unique charm that belies their rugged nature. Despite the harsh conditions, they have an incredible ability to rest and recuperate quickly, making them perfect for long, arduous journeys. Bedouin tribes would often set up camp, allowing their camels to rest and graze, knowing that these animals were their most valuable asset. The bond between a camel and its owner was strong, often passed down through generations, with young camels learning the trade from their elders. Finding water in the desert was a rare and precious event, and camels were experts at making the most of these opportunities. Even in the face of sandstorms and extreme weather, camels would press on, their thick coats and tough skin providing natural protection. At markets, camels were traded like gold, their value reflecting their importance in daily life and commerce. Today, while modern transportation has taken over, camels remain a symbol of resilience and endurance, a testament to their historical significance. As the sun sets over the desert, the silhouette of a camel caravan reminds us of a time when these incredible animals were the lifeblood of a civilization. The legacy of camels endures, a harmonious blend of tradition and survival in one of the world's most challenging environments. Truly, camels are the ships of the desert, navigating the vast seas of sand with grace and endurance. Section 6. The Incense Route, Perfume, Spices and Riches Forget your iPhones and designer handbags. In the ancient world, real wealth was measured in frankincense and myrrh. And guess what? 
pre-oil Arabia sat smack dab in the middle of the most lucrative trade route you've probably never heard of, the incense route. This wasn't your average highway rest stop souvenir shop, we're talking high-end luxury goods here. Frankincense and myrrh, prized for their aromatic and medicinal properties, were the ancient world's equivalent of Chanel No. 5 and a year's supply of vitamins, all rolled into one. This aromatic resin, harvested from trees in southern Arabia, was more valuable than gold in many parts of the ancient world. And the route? It stretched from modern-day Oman and Yemen, through the Arabian Peninsula, all the way to Egypt, Greece and Rome. Imagine a constant flow of caravans laden with frankincense and myrrh, winding their way through the desert, their cargo destined for the palaces and temples of the ancient world. This lucrative trade brought immense wealth and influence to the Arabian Peninsula, turning it into a hub of global commerce.